So I'm going to show you how to um, do another sketch with uh, Adobe Illustrator and a couple little steps that I've been working on to show you. Um, basically what we're going to start with is we're going to start with placing a reference image on the screen just to start off with. So we're going to go and say place and then look through our different stuff that we have and I happen to have a bunch of stuff which helps me out and if you click in a corner and then you drag when you place something you can make it pretty much fit the whole screen which is kind of nice so then I'm going to drag it down a little bit in the middle and I am going to just leave it there I'm going to um, show you a little something so remember we talked about workspaces in the beginning one place to go which makes it really easy is to change your workspace to painting and then all of a sudden you're kind of in this mode where things are set up to make it easy to do uh, drawing and painting and stuff so that's a good trick just change it over to painting um, and you'll see you've got all these swatches in here and whatnot if you want if you hit the I button or go to the eyedropper tool you can sample colors from um, what you're working on. Like say I can sample this color right here and then you can actually um, add a group of swatches to that are based off of that particular color harmony. Like so let's say I pick this like gold in the eye then I can just pop that group in there and you can see it here there's like this new group that's all about that you know, gold in the eye. It's kind of a neat trick to kind of get some colors um, that you might want to play with. Let's see, we could take a little color from here maybe and then pop that in and see we got like this nice little comment of colors um, to play with. And one last just for fun, get that lip color and then I'm going to pop it into the swatches and so it's all in there. Um, and you can kind of stretch your swatches panel out more like that if you want. Um, what else? Okay, so we've got this on this layer. We talked a lot about like changing the layer so that it's a little dimmer so you can see your brush marks. Um, you double click on the little layer icon of the little square and then you can say dim images 50% whatever you want. Some people dim it way down. I, I like to kind of see what I'm doing a little, sometimes even less dim, but I'm going to do it this way for now. Um, then it's a good idea to lock this layer so you don't start messing with it too much and then throw another layer over the top. And this is going to be your, uh, let's call it brush layer. And we're going to then double click on the brush tool which is over here and you can change the fidelity from super smooth to super accurate you know if you're not if you're kind of shaky like me you kind of like it in the middle um, and this is just like if you want to edit those paths that you draw like if you draw a mistaken path you can as long as you're within seven pixels you'll be able to redo it so that you can change depending on if you if you're doing really close together lines and you don't want them to change you, you know, if you're doing really far together lines you can change it more so we're just going to say okay and hopefully that works um, and then we're going to create a new brush and this is where the Wacom really comes in handy um, so you go over to new brush and you're going to get the calligraphic brush the calligraphy brush <laughs> And you're going to say, OK, and then it's going to give you these options. And this is, you know, size nine is, is the, the starting point. And if you say pressure, then you can have the variation of if you're pushing really hard to pushing really soft, you can see the difference between the two of those spots. So it just goes. Um, so you can say the roundness and the angle. Most people don't mess with that. They're, perhaps maybe a time I you know sometimes I play with it just to see what happens but say okay and then we're going to 
you know, with this painting mode, you tend to have your properties panel like way up here. So it's a little, it takes a little getting used to because, you know, I'm used to going over here for my properties panel. But um, you really don't want fill. <clears throat> so you're going to get rid of your fill because you want to just do brush strokes. And you want your color um, somewhat dark. So we're going to look through these colors here that we found for the fish. And I think we're going to go with this nice dark one. You could also draw lighter lines if you don't want them to show up so much. And then darken them in later. That's another technique people use. Um, but you can play around with it. It doesn't have to be like just follow the rules, you know. But for a lot of comic books, they have like kind of dark black. And then you kind of work around that. So... Um, that's kind of up to you. So once you have your brush, uh, you know, made, you're going to, and you have it all set, then it's time to pretty much start drawing. And so what you're going to do is you're going to go over to your Wacom and you can kind of see on follow along on the computer. You could zoom in more. Um, I'm just going to do it zoomed out so you don't have to watch me zooming in and out so much. But if you're really trying to get like some you know, um, super close, you know, tight lines, then you want to zoom in more. So you can see this is a pretty thick line. So if you want to try it again with a smaller one, let's go undo. And um, to change the size of your brush, you can use these square bracket tools. And you can see if I use the one that's on the left, it gets smaller and smaller, and the one on the right gets larger and larger. And that's kind of the starting point of the brush. So you can, during the course of this, change to different brushes. Now if you, if you uh, start really light and you thicken up and you end really light, you can get some pretty beautiful lines. So that's that. Um, and it just kind of allow yourself a chance to practice these lines um, and just enjoy the, the smoothing effect. I mean, it's really kind of amazing. I mean, you'll you'll feel like a god, you know, in terms of drawing because um, that smoothing effect really makes the lines kind of flow together, which is pretty awesome. So you kind of go around like that. Um, and sometimes this is where having it really dim could be bad, you know, you'd be like, um, I can't see where the belly of this fish is, but fortunately I kind of know my fish anatomy a little bit. See that line I didn't like, so I'm going to undo it, and I can just redo that line. Um, and see how it's kind of selecting this other line. I can pull it into that line and do that. So, there we go. And then I can take this line and pull it up into that one. And if you double up a line, it kind of gets a really nice thick thick line for you and you can kind of go back over that same line really thicken it up um, um, what else and as you're kind of going around these little things think about you know really alternating the pressure of your approach like don't just hold it in the same thickness but really take advantage of that pressure sensitivity and you'll see you get more, much more interesting lines Really light. <laughs> and um, sometimes when you're getting a bunch of lines in it, the computer, you can hear it just really uh, working hard. Um, that's definitely tough on the computer. <laughs> But most of the time it won't crash on you unless you have a really old computer. Um, I find it actually really beneficial to change the orientation of the tablet sometimes, you know, so that you're coming at your brush stroke um, from the right angle to pull towards you, you know, or push it. I think pulling towards me, I, I tend to prefer. Okay, and you know, little areas like this, if you want to correct them later, you can. Um, what I'm really trying to do is kind of keep keep my lines pretty good, but don't get too frust 
uptight about it. I'm going to go a little smaller because I want to have a little more ability to do detail. There we go. That's better. And so anyways, you're going to just keep keep drawing and working on this for a while and you can kind of do these little strokes like this for the fins. Oops. And just remember control Z is undo. So you know, if you don't like the way things are going, you can just undo them. And you can pretty much um, select these things. Like if you didn't like all these lines here, you can kind of select all these lines and uh, delete them. And you got, you got rid of them. So anyway, um, that's something to, to consider if you're working on something and you just, ah, that's just not working. You can just get rid of all those lines. And I'm going to go even smaller for these because I really don't want them small. Now, a lot of, you know, doing these kind of comic drawings and graphic drawings is um, being very deliberate with your lines and very clean. And so if you can, you know, it's, it does help to kind of like work and think about how dark things are going to get. You know, and kind of use those dark edges as this little spot to hide stuff in. You know, you can kind of really get a strong, use the dark to kind of define the bottom of things, like thicken up that line on the bottom of his jaw a little bit. Um, kind of work here. And let's see, maybe zoom in a little bit here so we can see. Now this is where the navigator thing, you can use your 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 stylus to move this around, which is really nice. See how that you can really see where we're going. Um, and and a lot, I will say, I mean, one, when you watch tutorials and stuff like that, you watch a lot of times they'll speed it up and. Uh, when they're speeding it up, what you're missing is this fact that a lot of this takes a long time to really get something nice. So if you if you work hard on this, eventually you get it looking good, you know. But it, it can take a while to really uh, make something really nice looking. So just take your time and you know just get the feel of the brush. I, that would be probably the biggest accomplishment of this particular assignment is just to kind of like play with the fact that the brush is making all these beautiful marks. Um, if you can really kind of like pretty them up, that's nice too. Um, so here we got this and then you know when you get further on down the road making those, you know, spend some, I mean there's like one of the things that sets apart artists is their willingness to do crazy amounts of work. And um, some artists are just like, oh, that's too much work. And, and sometimes you'd be surprised at just the act of trying to um, make something take so long, you know, that that's what really sets people apart is that people are willing to go to those lengths and like make something um, that actually took super amounts a long time. So anyway, we're gonna do this real quick. Just kind of in this area, so you can kind of see what it looks like. And you know, I'll be drawn along, and and here I am talking. I'm trying to be a little more. Um, you know, teaching you things as I'm going along, but sometimes the act of drawing is just an intuitive one, and you just want to kind of get 
involved in you know, intuitive things. So you can uh, just kind of dwell on what's going on with your life. Okay. And what's great is these little spots are so easy to do um, with the pen. Okay, so now I'm going to speed it up a little bit for you so you don't have to watch me draw this entire thing. But you can kind of see how I'm moving all over the place, throwing in lines here erasing lines, doing undo when it doesn't work, thickening up lines, um, redoing that adipose fin, which is a critical feature of a good steelhead, and just throwing in tons of these dots. I mean, this could take forever if you want, and it's not an unenjoyable thing to do, just to spend some time and throw in a few of these little lines that give a little contrast to things, um, create little spots for you to kind of plop your color in later um, and that's about it so once you get there you got it and uh, well, now we're about ready to start coloring things in um, so there's all kinds of different ways you can color stuff in um, but one of the easiest most direct ways to do th do this is with the blob brush and if you look over here that's the pencil tool um, you can go to the blob brush so I don't know if I mentioned it earlier but here's um, we're set in actually painting now instead of essentials. So uh, painting does give you all these easy access to all these things and let you see the layers really clearly, which is nice. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna create, like we did before with the brush, we're gonna create yet another layer. And this one we're gonna call color. And it's good to have your color one just below your, your um, ink brush layer because then you'll see if I choose a color here, um, let's say I choose this kind of greenish color, right? Um, and we have the blob brush selected. Go over to our um, Wacom and you can use these bracket keys to change the size of your brush. We talked about that. And you can kind of see, like see that little circle getting bigger and smaller. By holding those, you can really change the brush. I recommend for just kind of doing the first layer, and this is a classic trick, is to just do that first layer, just fill in your entire shape. Um, and they talk about splitting the line. So you kind of go right up to the edge. One thing, if you do go over, you can always take your eraser tool because this is now a shape. Remember, you can't erase strokes, you can erase shapes. And because the brush layer isn't selected, I can erase, you know, um, with abandon um, and not worry about um, getting rid of my fish. This is a lot like, say, the selection tool in <laughs> Photoshop, actually. So you can kind of, sometimes it's easier to go over your line um, with this stage and then erase back in because you can get just the whole thing because what you want is you want to try to get this whole shape um, created as one shape and then by using the eraser tool which is shift E that's the shortcut you can go in and carve out um, your edge and you know I've seen a lot of great um, comics and illustrations where they they let a little of the uh, color lead out from the edge you know and it's up to you if you want to be like super precise or um, a little looser with your art it, you know this is digital um, illustration um, you can tell already having this nice thick black line gives me a lot of leeway in terms of erasing because if I'm going into that line at all see how it doesn't it doesn't really matter because that line kind of gives me a little coverage um, but when you're kind of happy with it and you can you know because it's its own layer you can do this you know later on so now we've created like basically the shape of the fish um, take this just to show you how easy it is 
So yeah, don't spend too much time making a perfect edge. Just kind of blob it in. Um, then you can do crazy stuff with this particular layer. Like I could get my gradient tool and click on this and do a gradient. You know, um, I could let's uh, let's actually do this differently. Select the fish and then do the gradient that way. Okay. So I'm going to go to my fill. Well, I'm going to go to my gradient type, and then um, it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to make it a little smaller so you can see. You can move this around according to where you want the light to be. Um, and what unfortunately this will do, unless you have a preset gradient, you will always go back to the black and white. But that's easy to do. You just double click on this and then you can pick one of your colors that you've kind of sampled. Uh, let's see, let's go for, um, how about this color here for that color? And then this top color, you just double click on it and let's get that nice, let's go for the more green. Okay, let's see what it looks like. Ooh, nice. And let's um, get bigger. Remember, it's Command-0, makes it full screen. And so already I've got like a gradientized fish, and I can change, you know, by pulling this, how much I want that color to go up there. Um, we've got this nice gradient. Let's create another layer here so we don't mess with our gradient. And um, a good thing to do is to make sure when you get something you like to lock it. So... Um, I'm going to create a new layer, and this one we're going to name uh, color details. And you can name it whatever you want, um, doesn't really matter. Just make sure it's not locked and click onto that. And then you're going to make sure that you have a good color to go with. And a lot of times, just to make sure you're not um, with the blob brush, not filling with there's a conflict there, it's good to go that. It's on the calligraphic brush so that it's got, you know, I've got touch sensitivity. Um, that's nice. And you're ready to start drawing. The blob brush, shift B, you get in there. And um, one, one last thing I want to suggest. If you don't know the colors you're working with, um, you can go back to this layer, unlock it briefly which is, this is your um, original image layer, and then just duplicate this layer by dragging it down, and then you have this little duplicate layer, and you can take this layer, then, and pull it all the way up to the top, so you can see it, and you're going to then shrink it down um, by scaling it down by using the shift button to keep it in proportion, and then you can take this little fish here, right? And remember we we made it dim to 70%. We're gonna take that off and say, okay. And then we have like a little model up here of what we're trying. You know, it's kind of like sticking, if you were painting, you would stick a uh, photograph on the wall to, you know, your source material to work with. So yeah, you got this here. You can kind of riff off of this. You can also, if you want to, use your eyedropper tool to get colors like we did earlier, from that, you can just go, oh, well, let me get that color. The trick is not to paint in this layer. You just, you want to paint over here. So we're going to go back to this brush details layer and we're going to start using the blob brush. And shift B is another shortcut to get in there. And we're going to just kind of look at this layer and kind of, you know, just vaguely play around, see if that color works. Um, this brush is a little small, so I'm going to make it a little bigger. You can see it's going bigger. And uh, you notice because this is below the drawing line, I can actually um, um, see my drawing really well through it. And I'm going to click over here and change this to a little brighter color here. Okay. So you can see the effects of that. Um, and I'm not going to go through the whole act of coloring this because it takes a long time. But um, 
I recommend people spend some time just play around with this. If you click on a color, you can also change that color here. And you can, you know, the next chapter we'll talk about global color and stuff. But for right now, let's just kind of stick with this. You can also click on it down here. And this opens up this color picker thing. So if I want to, like, change it just to be a little more nice, bright pink, I can. And then if somehow that color is really important to me, I can drag it over here into my color thing. And it'll end up kind of right there. And this on the fish seemed really important to me, so I'm going to kind of like pop that pink in there. And you can go from there. You can you can do a layer like this over something and then come back in and maybe, uh, let's see, we had some nice kind of creamy white, kind of yellowy white. Just change the size of your brush. Just, yeah, there's a little, you know, and you can, this if you don't fill things all the way, sometimes you get this little hint of the color underneath, which is cool you know, blah, blah, blah. And then um, if you need to zoom in, Command Plus takes you in deeper. Um, the last thing I want to show you is you can use the navigator, right? To With your Wickham, you, you have your pen, so being able to move around um, with the navigator really helps because you can just, you know, um, change the perspective. You can zoom out a little. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay. And um, changing your brush size is really important. And remember, if you push down hard, it makes a thicker brush. Push down light. Makes, you know, in comics, typically, there's not, you know, that many shades of color that they're playing with. Um, so you don't, don't go too crazy trying to make it too realistic unless you really want to. And if you do, that's your prerogative. You can play around with all these layers of color. Um, I want to show you one last thing, and I promise this will be um, the end of what I'm going to show you. And I'll show you how it ends up at the end here. Um, but if you're doing these different um, strokes, there's one other way to draw with the thing is you you, um, you definitely want to open up your properties. Let's go to Window. I love I love the properties thing, and that's one thing I wish you know when you're doing this. Um, if you set up your own version of a stuff, you've got opacity there, which that for this particular stroke. So say I want to change this color to uh, what do I want to change it to. This is the hardest part. You know, give yourself a chance. Say I want to change it to that color, right? I can change the opacity here. If I click on this for that particular stroke, I can change it to multiply, which means that it'll just darken it. And I can also take how much, like if I wanted just a fainter thing to happen, I can I can change that. And watch what happens with the multiply tool. It's pretty pretty amazing. So let's uh, let's take our brush size up. I'm kind of moving it to white so you can see it. Sometimes it's good. But I can see, watch this, it goes on normal, but then it, because it's in multiply mode, see how it just darkens it a little bit? So if, that's a really good trick for if you want a subtle um, darkening. You know, we've already got the gradient, but you can do these kind of like soft darkenings, you know, because if you look at um, this fish here, see all this dark over here? So that, to get that, I can just kind of like, uh, you know, throw down some of this nice darkness in here, and that'll just kind of, you know, add a lot of easy uh, shading. And, you know, it's a weird thing. You're like, I'm covering up my lines, but then you're not. So don't worry about it. And, you know, the thing about the blob brush, we learned this early on, but each different color becomes its own shape. So if I take this and go over the top of that, that's its own shape. And if I were to go back in and change the opacity to normal, right? And um, and here's a neat thing. Like if I do normal but have the, the amount, the density down to 37, you can get some other subtle stuff. Like watch this. This is just normal, but it's 
See how it just barely shows up? And which is kind of cool. Um, so, but it's it doesn't affect that that one line. It's in its own mode. So, um, play play around with that, and you know, change your opacity. Just just have some good fun with it. And that that's it for this particular idea. Um, I hope you have fun on this one, and don't don't stress too much. All right, bye.